Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Facebook Live broadcast of our Wednesday night Bible study. This is a, a first for this year. We are gathered in a in a, uh, a Sunday school room and uh, having uh, our Bible study together for the past year. I've looked into a computer screen, and stared at a computer camera to try to make it uh, uh, be where I can just speak right to you. And tonight, uh, I, I get to look at some other folks out there. At least I can see figures of stuff because we're kind of sitting in the dark. But uh, it's uh, so good to, to see everybody. And uh, we are, we're going to begin tonight talking about the Word of God. Last week, we talked about the inspiration of Scripture. And tonight, we're going to begin with a discussion on the exclusiveness of Scripture. And that's the idea that uh, the Word of God that we have is the revelation of God's truth to us. Of course, it is a salvation story. It is about the redemption of man, but it is all that we need. Uh, we don't need to add to it. We don't need to go to another religion. We don't need to compare ourselves with another religion necessarily, but we have all we need uh, to, to receive God's truth. We, uh, we're asking some questions tonight about the... Um, how the Bible came about, okay? We, we know that it was inspired by God, but how did, the, how did it come to its final form? How did it come to its final form, and when did that happen? Um, we believe that Jesus gives us the first um, understanding of this. Let's see where I am on my slides here. Just a second. Um, let me give that to you. John chapter 16, 12 through 15, Jesus said to his disciples, he says, there's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He also, let's see if I'm, uh, am I somewhere close? What's the next one? He'll bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and this is why I say the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Amen? <laughs> That's so funny. It's hard to make those adjustments on the screen. It's, uh, that's, that's what I'm, i got to get the mouse in the right place for that to work. Jesus lays the groundwork for the writing of the New Testament. He says the Holy Spirit's going to come, and he's going to tell you about things that are going to take place. Okay, He's going to tell you about the future. The cross hasn't happened yet. The empty tomb hasn't happened yet. The coming of the Holy Spirit hasn't happened yet. So Jesus tells them there's stuff coming that's, that you're going to have to, uh, you, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be revealed to you. So the meaning of the cross and the meaning of that empty tomb and the meaning of the coming of the Holy Spirit, everything, Jesus lays the foundation, it's on the way. He also says to them that, that the Holy Spirit would lead them and guide them. Uh, again, Jesus just says, you'll be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. Well, how do you do that, Jesus? Hello? Anybody got any? How do you do that? Well, the Holy Spirit's going to lead and guide. And if you'll read the book of Acts, you'll see that step by step, the Holy Spirit led them, guided them, stopped Paul from going one place, uh, gave Peter a vision and another time. The Holy Spirit led them all the way through. Um, he said also that the Holy Spirit would, would speak his words and bring glory to him. Um he would glorify Jesus. Um, and, and that, um, I think, just uh, further gives to us the understanding that, that not only would, would they see and understand about the cross and about, uh, about uh, the resurrection, but they'd also be able to relate it to church doctrine and how to live and 
how to walk, and, and the meaning, uh, uh, as, as many times they went back to the Old Testament to understand faith and grace and uh, um, everything that comes from, again, that Old Testament um, understanding. So Jesus lays the foundation, if, if we can understand it, for the, the writing of the New Testament. Because we talk about the Bible or the Scriptures, but when, when Peter and Paul talked about the Scriptures, they were talking about the Old Testament, what we know as the Old Testament. They, they didn't have anything for 10, 12, 20, 30 years. Uh, all they had was the Old Testament. So when they say that Jesus is revealed in the Scriptures, they're talking about the Old Testament. And they're going to preach about this truth of the scriptures. They're primarily, even though they're going to refer to, uh, eventually Peter will refer to Paul. Uh, they're talking about, about the Old Testament. Um, when Paul talks about this um, mystery that he has received in, there in, um, in Ephesians chapter 3, um, Again, we'll, we'll give, a, give you a little magic here. In, in Ephesians chapter 3, he says, Paul, when, when I think of this, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, assuming, by the way, that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles. As briefly I wrote earlier, God himself revealed this mysterious plan to me. As you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into his plan regarding Christ. Okay? So Paul says, I've received something. Um, I've received something from God, uh, a special grace into the, into the understanding of God's plan. Now, uh, the New Living Translation there gives you the word mysterious. And uh, if you're looking at King James, he would talk about the mystery. But we're not talking about something that is secret or something that is uh, hard to understand. Um, it's talking about something that is hidden. Okay? So the, the plan of God for salvation of the world was not, is not something that's difficult to understand or something that God wants to make um, uh, secret. It is something that was right there in front of us that it took man a long time to figure out until God opened our eyes to see it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, he will, he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Talking to God talking to the serpent. There's one coming. There's one coming. He's going he's to strike your head, you'll strike his heel. Well, that's a, that's a message of salvation for us, that this... This usurper of the world's authority is going to be overthrown. Or the, the words to Abraham, when God said to him, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you because of you. Well, what did Abraham understand? Oh, I don't know how that happens. Maybe I'll be rich and wealthy and, and, and help some people out along the way. Well, it was in Jesus. It was in Jesus. Jesus was the source of the blessing that God promised to Abraham. But no one saw it until Jesus came, died on the cross, rose again, the Holy Spirit came, and then God gave that grace of understanding to them so that they could preach that truth. And Paul especially had a, had a grace. He had a, a ministry of, um, of preaching that hidden truth of God. Okay? All right. Well, again, talking about that exclusive nature of, of the scriptures, um, uh, in Peter, First Peter, or Second Peter, chapter one, we've had these verses before, um, but again, Peter says you must realize no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. This is the exclusive nature of the Word of God. Okay, the Bible is not just written by men. It had a working of the Holy Spirit. It's different from every other book you're going to pick up. It's not just, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not just a good story, okay? There's some good stories that you can read there, but it is inspired of God. It is, 
It is anointed of God. It is a. It is exclusive to us. It has come as God moved upon the hearts of of men who wrote the Scripture. And then again, in uh, later in chapter three of that same book, he said, "Remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved." This is what our beloved Paul, brother Paul, also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. Those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture. Now, this is important because Peter is recognizing that Paul's writings, his letters, are Scripture. Okay? Other Scripture. He's including Paul's writings in the along with the Old Testament books. And uh, Peter, as a leader of the, of the apostles, it's, it's very important that he does that. Of course, they, they do that. Uh, this will result in their destruction, he says. So, um, so there, there gives to us that exclusiveness of the Scripture. I hope you, you understand what we're talking about there. We know that... that um, the New Testament, I believe, is was finished. Obviously, um, John the Revelator wrote in around in the '90s, early '90s. Most of the New Testament was written prior to the '60s. Okay, I think I've got a, a graphic for you again. We'll see if we can we can pull that up. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that's just. Hebrews, I'm, I believe Hebrews was written in the 80s, Revelation in the early 90s. Well, first, second, third John may have been written late as well. So we have this, this expanse. Moses wrote in around 1450 B.C. Okay? The prophets, all the writings of the Old Testament, we come down to about 400. Malachi, just after Nehemiah, we're studying on Sunday morning. Amen? Nehemiah. Now, uh, we'll talk about this in a, in a minute, but this is very important what Nehemiah and Ezra do, okay? Because it, it's very important. Then you have a, a, a really 400 years of silence. Jesus comes, and then they begin to write letters. They begin to write the Gospels. They begin to write the, 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 uh, the different history or acts, if you will. We call that a history. Um, and that is going to stop by year 90. So you got about 1,600 years somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, uh, 66 books and 39 authors and all of them saying about the same thing. All right? So we recognize, I'll get off that for just a moment. Hold that thought just a minute, I think. Hold that thought for just a minute. Let me emphasize one other truth in, in this exclusiveness as, as we do. Um, as I showed you that timeline, we come down to the, to the fact that we believe that Scripture writing has ceased, primarily because Jesus has come. Okay, Hebrews chapter 1, uh, uh, and in verse 1 and 2, says, Long ago God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. Now in these final days, he has spoken to us in his Son. Okay? That's important. He has spoken to us in Jesus. Now, everybody in the New Testament is going to write about Jesus. Right? He's going to write about Jesus. But it, it, it is the closing, if you will, of the revelation. Jesus is the ultimate revelation given to us. Um, many times we use scriptures such as 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 10, when that which is perfect is come, then those things that, are, that we know in part will be done away with. Well, I don't think that really refers to the scripture, even though a lot of people use that. Or we use Revelation 22, where, where this ominous warning is given. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if anyone take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and out of the things that are written in the book. How many of you have ever read that with a little bit of fear? Um, I, I think John's talking about his revelation and his prophecy and not, not the entire New Testament, okay? 
So, but it does give to us this idea that there, there, there is a an exclusive nature to the scripture. I don't want to add to it. I, I don't, you know. Again, I don't want to go. I don't want to make Buddha Jesus' brother cousin. I, I don't want to let Jesus be a part of the Hindu group of gods. I, I, there's something exclusive about, about Jesus in the New Testament and and the story of salvation. So I've got to keep it that way. I've got to I've got to recognize that's 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 there. <laughs> okay, but it does speak to me about the fact that that the scriptures that we have is. They are full and complete. We don't need to add to them. We don't need to take away from them, but I don't need to add to them uh, as well. Um, well, I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing all right. I think time wise, I got some more stuff there. I'm just. I just. I don't know if I'm going to worry about that. Um, the. The. The other truth is, is that God still speaks to us. To say that there is no scripture being written does not say God doesn't speak to us. It just doesn't come up to the same level of scripture. Okay. I believe God speaks in tongues and interpretation and prophecy. I think once in a while I preach and I think it's God speaking to you. Okay. Uh, I, I really believe that, that God gives a message that, that is so... Uh, on point and and um, uh, directed to us that, that it is God speaking to us, but it doesn't. It, it it's not worth recording on Revelation chapter twenty three. Okay, it, it's 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 not uh, Acts twenty nine as, as as we talk about. Um, it doesn't reach that level. But God still speaks to us. Okay, not in the same level and not in the same way. There may be uh, there. Part of the charismatic movement, um, boy, you can you'll find churches some in some places they have all of their prophecies written down because they're 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 going to come to pass and they're going to work it out. And if you talk to the Catholic Church, they'll tell you that when the Pope speaks, he's speaking uh, ex nihilo. He is speaking as God speaks, and it's it's more important than Scripture. You know, just as important as Scripture. He is at it too. But we we think that we we teach to you. The New Testament's closed. God still speaks, just not at the same um, level as he has uh, spoken through the prophets of old. So the scriptures that we have, they're inspired of the Holy Spirit. The, uh, the Holy Spirit brought to us the Old Testament, the New Testament. And that same level of inspiration is, is not at work today. Uh, it was for the creation of the scriptures. God has spoken to us. He's given everything that we need for life, for godliness, for salvation, to make it to heaven. All I got to do is read the read the read the map. That's all I got to do. I've got the guidebook. I know how to get there. Um, I was I was laughing. Linda and I had uh, my old college roommate came by Jackson yesterday, and he's on his way to Tulsa, but he he lives in North Carolina and he's driving to Tulsa, but he's determined not to go interstate. So he's he's going the back roads all the way from all the way. So I was trying to get him from here to Fayetteville, Arkansas, not going by 40. And I said, well, you either got to go to Dyersburg or Memphis because you can't cross the river any other place unless you can find a ferry somewhere. And I don't know where those things are. Uh, but uh, he he's, he had GPS and he'd go from one little city to the next little city. Of course, 412, I didn't know this, but 412 runs the northern part of of um, Arkansas, but we have GPS to get to heaven. It's it's called the Bible. It'll get you there. Okay, don't need anything else. Don't need uh, it, it. Other things can help us. Amen. Devotionals, books, commentary, anything we they're going to help us, but not absolutely necessary. Let's talk about the canon of Scripture for just a moment. I'm going to have you know what that word canon means. That's a that's a Greek word, comes straight out of the Greek. They would spell it with a K instead of a C. Um, but it, it, it is the word for read, okay, or ra. And uh, it would, they would measure things with a, with a read. They'd know how, exactly how long it was. And so it's so many, so many sections. So the, the, uh, those things that are in the canon are those things that have been measured 
those things that have come to a standard. All right? That's, that's what we're talking about when we talk about the canon of Scripture. Um, we've lived for 1,900 years without any uh, new books being written of the Scriptures. There's been no new apostolic letters. We don't get a letter from a prophet, even though we've got a lot that... Uh, tried to prophesy in the last uh, the last year, and most of them failed. But we we recognize that uh, 1,900 years ago, or not 1,900 years ago, but but men of God in the study of the Word determined which writings would be included in our Bible. Okay. Now, I showed you that, uh, that graphic before of Moses and all this. The one thing that happened there at, at around 400 is we know that Ezra, when Ezra and Nehemiah reestablished the city of Jerusalem, when Nehemiah built those walls, they had an emphasis upon the Word of God teaching the Word of God, learning the Word of God, reading the Word of God. The synagogue became just as important as the temple. And the natural question is, what books are we to read and study at the synagogue teaching? What books are important? You say, well, there are other books. Well, actually, there were some other writings, okay? There actually were some other writings. But as they went through these, and I think I'm, I, I'll kind of be out of order there of my slides, we're familiar, we're familiar with this. The Torah, the Jews broke the Old Testament into three groups. The Torah, first five books. And then they did the prophets. Okay? So Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings were all, they, they were prophetic books in that they were written by prophets. Then you have the major and the minor prophets as we know them from Isaiah all the way to Malachi, with the exception of Daniel, and he was part of the writings. Okay, so Psalms and Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Nehemiah, Ezra, Chronicles. That, that's the way the Jews divided up their scripture. Well, this is the division we believe that Ezra made. Okay? Ezra, who, who we've been studying on Sunday mornings, was the one who, who uh, dis, uh, made, helped to make those decisions. That, that generation determined what would be in the Old Testament. Um, there were other books, and there's a, here's a list of them. Uh, they don't mean anything to me. How many of you have ever, other than Maccabees, I've heard of him, I've heard of Enoch, the book of Enoch. Um, that's a, that's some, some Christian study that, book of Jubilees, these other things. But these are some writings that were, that were uh, available and in which Ezra and his generation says, no, these just, they're, they're, they're just not scriptures. We're going to close it right here with Malachi. All right? In the New Testament, we have some similar books. In other words, books that are supposedly written by disciples. Some of them have just been found. And we'll talk about the Gospel of Thomas. But you've got the history of James, the Apocalypse of Peter, the Apocalypse of Paul, the, the Gospel of Barnabas. How many of you have heard of the Gospel of Judas? I don't know what kind of good news he could have, but uh, he's in the news. You know, he, he has a whole different gospel because that, that book talks about the fact that he was doing Jesus a favor by betraying him. Jesus took him aside and said, you, you, you do me this great honor of releasing me from this physical body if you'll betray me. <clears throat> kind of a twist on, on, on scripture there. Okay. Now, what we know is, is, is back in the back. In the, in the 40s, they found around the Dead Sea, and that's the Dead Sea there, they found in caves around the Dead Sea, I think you can see a cave, a little black hole there. Maybe there's some black holes. There. It's in, in the caves, they found scrolls, Old Testament scrolls, the writings of the Qumran community, the Essenes. Um, this will be a great verification for um, the writings of the Old Testament that they are uh, the same as what we have today, okay? Because these these scrolls are 2,000 years old. They're the oldest Old Testament writings that we have. 2,000 years old. They come from the time of Jesus. All right? 
There's, there's some of those scrolls. There's the scroll of Isaiah. They, they put uh, the scroll of Isaiah on, or the, right, the book of Isaiah on the copper scroll. But they put them in jars, and they put them in the, in the caves. And they, they, they stayed 2,000 years. They were papyrus-based, um, and, and it's amazing that they could survive that long. But in that environment, uh, in 1945, they found the Gospel of Thomas in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Okay, Nag Hammadi, Egypt, they found the Gospel of Thomas. Well, you know, everybody's all excited. Oh, we've got a new gospel. we got a new gospel, and there's 114 sayings of Jesus in this. And so, uh, you know, they're, everybody's all excited about it. So I'll give you some of these. I'll, I'll, here's some of them. For many who are first will become last. Sound like Jesus? Sounds like it's right out of the New Testament. Doesn't it? For there is nothing hidden that will not become manifest. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Whoever has ears to hear should hear. Man, I should, I should have numbered these. Let's let's see this next one. Blessed is the lion that a person will eat, and the lion will become human. Anybody got takers on that one? If you do not make the Sabbath into a Sabbath, you will not see the Father. Not quite like Jesus. So his disciples come to him and he says, when will the resurrection of the dead take place? And when will the new world come? Jesus is supposedly says, that resurrection which you are awaiting has already come and you did not recognize it. Now, how many of you understand that didn't make it into the New Testament with good cause and with good reason? Okay. Um, it's, it, is it at odds with the teaching of the resurrection it's got sayings that are, Jesus made some hard to understand sayings, but let me tell you, I don't know what the deal is with the lion. Uh, you know, there were other lion, blessed is, the, blessed is the person that eats the lion. and They don't become a lion, but the lion becomes, I don't know why. But um, that didn't become scripture. Well, we can see as we, as we, would read these books, these these apocrypha is what they call them, uh, as we would read that, they just don't come up to the same standard as the New Testament books, all right? Um, Jesus, when he preached, he preached exclusively from the Old Testament. The book of Maccabees was available to him because they lived a hundred or so years before Jesus. But he didn't, he didn't quote from them. He didn't quote from Enoch. He didn't quote from, he didn't quote from the Essenes either, even though they, they talked about light and darkness. He, he quoted exclusively from the Old Testament. He had a, a talk of the kingdom. He wasn't talking about a physical kingdom. He was talking about a spiritual kingdom. Even though he was the son of David, he was going to sit on David's throne but he wasn't going to write then. He promises he's going to return. He's going to do that. But now it's a spiritual kingdom that brings a, a new heart and a new life. And, and this, this truth found throughout the, uh, throughout the Scripture, really, from the Old Testament preaching of Jesus, the Old Testament preaching of of Peter who stands up and says, this is what the prophet Joel talked about, or, or Paul talking about Abraham. Or it, it, you see where, where it all connects. It all brings comes to, to, together with the teaching about Jesus. Well, Jesus, this is what Jesus did as he preached the Old Testament. The, whole, the, the church went out and preached the same thing. If you read their sermons, it's all about Jesus being revealed in the Old Testament scriptures. Okay, they had the same ministry. They had the same life. They wrote letters to each other. They wrote to churches to encourage them. And that becomes for us the very formation of, uh, of, the, of the New Testament. Okay. Um, uh, obviously, some things, I, I don't think um, the Gospel of Thomas, they, they say it was written maybe around 150 A.D., a lot of these things come in the second century or the third century, but um, um, it's possible 
that some other writings were were there that w that would have been um, rejected. So we have these three rules that um, that our text gives to us on the canon. In order to be in the New Testament, it has to be either written by or backed by an apostle. Secondly, its contents must be must be of such a spiritual character that is recognized as divinely inspired. Third thing is, get my, it must be accepted universally by the church as divinely inspired. And I, the, the, there's not a fourth rule, but this is the statement. Now, the, the church, as I said, around A.D. 90, John's going to die. The book of Revelation is written, uh, sent to the churches of, of Asia. And uh, there's not going to be any scriptures written. There's a lot of preachers. There's a lot of church fathers who are writing. They're explaining where these things came from. They'll talk about Mark having followed Peter and having listened to the preaching of Peter and wrote the Gospel of Mark. They'll give us some explanation of, of the scripture. OK, uh, but they're not writing scripture. They're not uh, professing to write scripture. They're not uh, adding to. And these 27 books that we have will remain. Once in a while, they'll argue over the book of Revelation because it's so hard to understand. Once in a while, they would argue over the book of Hebrews because there's no clear authorship to Hebrews. And they may have asked different questions of of. Um, of some of the other books, okay? But as the church progresses, by the year 397, the church gets together at a council and they confirm what the Holy Spirit has already done, and that is he has inspired 27 books of the New Testament. They don't have to worry about the Old Testament because Ezra and Nehemiah took care of that, <laughs> okay? Uh, but 27 books... Uh, letters of the, of the New Testament are are approved, uh, not not approved by the church. I don't want to say that. I want to say it's approved by God. Okay, I want to say it's accepted by God, inspired by God, but just confirmed by the church that um, this is the New Testament. This is the, these are our 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 sacred text. Um, we don't have to. I don't think we have to be looking for the gospel of, of, uh, of Thomas. I don't have to worry that the gospel of Mary is going to reveal that Jesus had a married uh, Da Vinci Code, married Mary and moved to the south of France. You know, it's, it's just, just I don't have to worry about those things. Uh, what we have is the full record, the exclusive record of the story of our salvation and, uh, and, and gives to us the, the um, complete revelation of God's salvation. Well, that comes, that brings me to the end of our Facebook Live group. God bless you tonight. We're going to pray with you that God will be with you and bless you in, in your study of the Word. Father, I just give you praise tonight. I thank you for the, for the scripture, the word that you have spoken to us. You have guarded over this word for generation after generation. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given it to us and that, Lord, it is for us life. It is truth. It is wisdom. It is, it is our guide to, to living and a guide that will get us to heaven. And I ask you, Lord, to, to be with each one. Uh, in this coming day, in these coming days, just give to us that revelation of your word and understanding of your word and a new love for your word as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.